Hey guys, how you doing? With us today is head coach of Felician University in Lodi, New Jersey, part of the CACC Division II program, Chris Langan, four-time consecutive coach of the year in the conference. Uh, he's been around since 2004 as the head coach at Felician. Chris, what's up, man? How you doing, Chris? I appreciate, obviously, you having me uh, on, and uh, hopefully you and your family are doing pretty well during this pandemic. Yes, sir. Likewise. Hopefully you guys are, too. Definitely, definitely. Definitely been a, a more of a family bonding time for sure. Yeah, no doubt. We got to stay in our house and sometimes get nuts by spending too much time with the family. I, I understand. <laughs> I understand. I got, and I got three, three girls and one teenager now. So, man, it's definitely been challenging. <laughs> well, we're, we're going to talk about all kinds of stuff today. Uh, number one, let's talk about COVID. So how are you uh, negotiating all the roadblocks associated with recruiting in this time frame right now? Yeah, I mean, it's been difficult, um, obviously, you know, for, for every, every coach across the country. Um, but obviously, I think this is where the relationships that you've formed over the years, you know, all start to kind of uh, click in and really help um, your, your program. I mean, obviously, uh, organizations like yourself, NLI, um, you know, a really great resource for, for the student athlete and, and recruiting virtually, which I, I think I joked about years ago would, would, would be happening and be possible. I mean, it's right in front of us right now. So, Definitely relying heavily on the virtual recruiting and uh, a lot of our trusted resources. You know, luckily, again, I've been around 18 years. A lot of guys, they do trust in this game. Um, so a lot of guys have pointed us in the right direction. And uh, obviously, it's up to us to use our eyes to then say, OK, you know, we're seeing the same things you're seeing. Um, and at least what was we're being told. And then go from there. And then uh, obviously get on Zoom calls like this, have dialogue with the family, and then just go you know, piece by piece. Um, since obviously, you know, recruiting on the actual campus hasn't happened. Um, it's just literally been like this, you know, you're kind of selling yourself over the, over the, uh, over a zoom call or over the internet. So it's, it's, uh, it's definitely been different, but it's, but it's, wor it's worked out well, you know, I can't really, uh, can't really complain. So again, okay. I appreciate your, all your hard work. Oh, no, I appreciate the good words. Thank you. Uh, it's been an unbelievable time this year. I can't wait till 2021 rolls around. Oh man. I, I hear that. <laughs> I hear that. <laughs> 2020 definitely can't end quick enough. I mean, I, I, let's, let's just remain safe and, and as healthy as possible. Yes, sir. So obviously you rely at this point a lot on video that's provided to you, correct, to make a decision? Yeah, I mean, there's no really other way. I mean, we're, we're, we're in that same boat as Division Ones, where we're, we're in a quiet period. Obviously, they're in a dead period. So it differs a little bit is where we're, we can actually do on-campus camps um, and do instructional workouts, but our school's closed down, so we can't do anything. Um, right. So, right, we're relying solely on word-of-mouth videos and, and, again, trusted resources like yourself. Have you slowed down your recruiting process, whereas maybe typically without COVID, you're, whatever, 18 to 24 months out? Are you slowing that down where maybe you're only 12 months out now? For sure. Um, and, and mainly the reason is uh, we, we don't really have an idea what the future budget holds. Um, we're just kind of up in the air. We're in limbo. Um, we're just waiting for direction, and I know that's uh, terrible to say, but because we're putting a lot of the kids on hold. But I mean, I think the rest of the country's in the same boat, and and our school's done a really good job of keeping us abreast of what's going on, and 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 giving us an idea of the budget. But until they say yeah, you know, go, we can't really go on the numbers yet. So yeah, um, definitely had slowed it down, for, you know, very considerably um, as as the years passed. So yeah, for sure. And I'm telling a lot of the guys I work with. Now, more than ever, you have to be patient because it's not that you're not being identified, but a lot of programs simply just don't know where they're at. Yeah, no, it's definitely true. I mean, this time, like, obviously for us coaches, trust me, there was panic mode set in for me. Anybody who's done this more than a year or two and is used to a routine, yeah, panic set in. Um, I'm like, man, what are we doing? We're losing out. We're missing out. We're going to miss guys. We're, you know, we, obviously we just want to keep staying competitive and, and give ourselves the best chance possible to get, um, you know, it, to be, you know, in our conference tournament and then an NCAA regional. And then sure. ultimate goal, obviously, to get into that World Series. But trying to stay patient has definitely not been easy. I mean, and then, again, staring at your, your walls for the last four months makes it even that much harder. But we're all getting there. We're, we're getting there. We're slowly but surely getting out of this thing. So Yes, we stay. are. No doubt about yeah. it. So let's switch gears away from COVID. And I'm going to – I talked to Dave Thurneau about his pitching philosophies in uh, the last episode. I want to talk to you about hitters. Um, what are what's your ideal hitting recruit? Someone that you would want at Felicia? I mean, I, I guess for me, there's a, there's a couple different aspects. For, um, you know, in as far as what we're looking for in hitters, um, 
I, I just like, honestly, guys that are blue collar type hitters. I like athletic guys, you know, guys that are very simple. I'm not a really big leg kick guy um, or all these toe taps. I, I like to see very simple at the plate. Um, one thing I for sure, you know, I want to see is bat speed and, and obviously guys kind of keeping their hands inside the ball. But I'm looking for guys that fight at the plate, you know, guys that are going to keep wearing out a pitcher until they make the mistake. And then obviously we capitalize on those mistakes. Um, to necessarily say I'm looking for this six foot four hulky guy is definitely not true. And on the flip, I'm not looking for that five nine kid like myself who can run real fast. We're just trying to find, you know, an athletic player um, right. that just grinds at the plate, battles all the time, and uh, it just puts together really good at bats and understands what we're trying to do, and which is get it to the next guy and kind of create innings that way. If you have a, uh, let's say you have two comparable recruits, and one's a multi-sport athlete and one's just a baseball specific player. Which one uh, would you prefer? I mean, I'm, I'm all about athleticism, so I'm going to go with that multi-sport guy. I, I, I think if you, you waste too much time on one sport, you just kind of get robotic. Um, I don't want robots. I want athletes. I think uh, the guys that play the other sports, they just understand a lot more about being competitive and, you know, just a different environment and, and, and being able to kind of shift gears a little bit differently than just a baseball player. I, I, you know, just you see it. You can see it every day you go out there. Guys that play basketball, football, you see the difference in, in their – just their makeup and the mentality as opposed to that baseball guy. Things just to me, again, it, it seems like it stands out. It's just robotic. Absolutely. I mean, as you know, we have a, a professional academy in Dominican Republic and the most highly sought after and paid position is shortstop because they're athletic and maybe if they don't work out there, they can go to the right side of the infield or maybe center field if they have that frame. Because they're an Pretty athlete. Much anywhere, right? Pretty much anywhere. Shortstop can pitch. I mean, in yep. some cases, they get to get converted into catchers because they usually got pretty good hands. So, yep. yeah, definitely. Shortstop is, is, is obviously a very important position. And with a limited budget, uh, where some schools have a limited budget, maybe not fully funded, if you have that athlete, you can transfer him to another position where you need him. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Uh, how important are grades in your eyes? Besides the obvious reason, what other factors do they show you in a potential recruit? I mean, for us, it's huge because we're going to be, you know, we're, we're not a fully funded program. We're going to be uh, needing that academic piece to help make the, uh, the package the best it can be. Um, you don't want headaches, you know. We're, we're dealing with 35 to 40 kids a year. Sometimes it's more. We actually um, have a JV program. So we're actually, our numbers are in the 50s. Um, you want guys that you don't have to worry about off the field. You know, they're going to do the work in the classroom. They're not going to embarrass, you, you know, yourself, their families. Um, you know, they're a the representation of you. So we're looking for guys, obviously, with good, good enough grades to, to make it work. Um, and then, obviously, I might have lost you for a second. There you um, go. Yep, you're back on. Okay, sorry. Um, you know, we're looking for those guys that, that – we're just going to be focused because um, you focus obviously in the classroom, you're going to focus on the field. And when one slips, the other suffers greatly as well. So um, definitely grades are important. Definitely the, for us, step one, step one, even before a good player, step one grades. Absolutely. No doubt about it. Is there a certain grade point average where you need to meet before uh, athletic money kicks in at Felicia? I lost you again because somebody keeps calling in. I apologize. <laughs> Is there a certain GPA that is required before athletic money kicks in at Felicia? Um, and we can start it at about a 2.5 GPA. Um, obviously, we're looking to help push for more money as we get closer to the 3.0 and then obviously above 3.0. Right. Things can start to become pretty rewarding. They'll get some really good packages. Good deal. Good deal. Yeah. Um, in reference to uh, upcoming recruiting classes, how are you guys looking? I mean, I think we're, we're doing well right now. I think we're strong. I think, obviously, with, um, with the pandemic, obviously, again, the good and the bad, we, get, we return a lot of guys. I mean, a lot of guys got some valuable time last year that were freshmen. Um, you know, but, again, now they're freshmen again, so it's kind of ironic. And then some guys that were a retro freshman are freshmen for the third time. So it's, um, it's definitely going to be challenging that way, but it's, it's been good. You know, we've been able to kind of identify the pieces that, that are missing, I think, and, uh, and, and just we think we've added them. So, we're, you know, I'm excited about when this thing kicks back off. Awesome. I got one more question for you, then I'll let you go. I really appreciate your time and all the information. Um, if there was one piece of advice that you would give any recruit, whether he's you're on him or any school's on him, what would that be? I mean, I say stay proactive and, and stay patient, especially during times like this. Um, you know, again, use the trusted resources like like yourself and some of the uh, some of the 
travel ball co uh, coaches out there. Um, but stay proactive, you know, and, and make sure you're communicating with the coaches. And they have to understand that, you know, I know a lot of people think that this is our, our it is our life in our livelihood. But I do have a life outside of baseball, and I and I cannot check my phone and my email every five seconds because, you know, it's nice that hundreds of them come in, but it's so hard to get back to all those kids. So so just be patient in, in regard to like us getting back to you. You know, give us a couple of days. If we don't get back, shoot us another email. So uh, that way we know that you're, you, you know, you're separating yourself from the others. Um, and then when you're sending video and, 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 you know, information profiles, try to have everything in there. You know, try to have the, the, web, uh, the web link. Try to have your NCID number. Try to have your grades, your, uh, your transcript, your SAT score. All the things that we're going to need to take to the next step to kind of get the process moving along. Because obviously as coaches, yeah, we're trying to make decisions quick just like the players. Um, but we can only go as fast as the information provided. We don't get the information in a timely fashion. We can't really move it along. Things start to lag. When things start to lag, things fall apart. And then, you know, this kid winds up somewhere else or, or the monies that maybe we thought we could you know, have held back. Now we lose just because now we're in panic mode. So right. I think um, it is a lot, obviously, but I, I think if you get all the information um, in, in one email, you know, it just makes life easier for all of us. Yeah, that, that's great advice. There's no doubt about it. And I tell my guys to stay persistent because like you just said, you might get 200 emails a day and there's no way you're going to respond to all of them. Can't happen. I mean, I think, yeah, I think we all pride ourselves on, on getting back to everybody and answering every call, text. But, it, you know, again, I got three kids, just like some of the other coach out there. We all families. It, it gets really, really hard. And you, it's hard to keep saying, like, give me one second. I'm on the phone. I'm doing this. You know, obviously, I, I want to take care of those kids, but I, mean, I want to see my kids grow up as well. So, yeah, yeah. absolutely, definitely stay persistent and uh, and stay on it, and then just be, you know, be patient. Yep, no doubt. Well, Chris, man, hey, I appreciate everything and taking time out of your day to give us info that's going to help everyone. No, always my pleasure, and I, I again, I really appreciate what you do for all the guys, even for us coaches. Um, you guys are first class, you know, top notch, and uh, you provide a lot of great insight and information for these families and for the student athlete. And hopefully they're uh, they're taking advantage of it. Well, thank you, sir. And uh, hopefully we'll see you in Florida at some point in 2020. You know you will. <laughs> All right, man. Hey, take care. Have a great day. All right. Be well, my friend. You and your family as well. Okay. Thank you. All right. You got it.